Remind me again what you thought of the powertrain of this. Uh, I really enjoyed the powertrain. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, it's smooth. It's one point three little tiny little sucker of an engine. Right. Yeah. Uh, but transmission, beautiful shifts on the transmission. Uh, it runs out well. All those types of things. Why don't you read to me what kind of transmission it has? Oh no. Oh no. Hey gearheads, just a quick reminder, hit that subscribe button down below because when we get to 500 subscribers, we will review Nelly Cruz, my car. And when we hit 1,000, we're gonna review Matt's car. And who knows what he will have done to it by then. Or, or if, if it's, it's the same car. <laughs> if it's even the same car. So be sure, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notified every time we post a video. All right, gearheads, we've got another head-to-head -head comparison of two mid-level luxury tall car crossovers. Uh, I am in what I think will be the winner of this comparison right now. So earlier today we drove the Mazda 3 hatch and this feels like the grown-up version of that and it basically is because it's a tall version of it. it is, I am in the CX-30, which is a tall version of the Mazda 3 hatch. And the interior, very familiar, having just come from the Mazda 3. Uh, like everywhere, everything. Uh, same angles, same lines. I do like, this one's got a two-tone interior. It's got brown on black and I like it a lot. It just feels like a taller version of that car without the really thick C-pillar back there. So I, you can see back behind me, there is a little porthole window that'll help you see over your shoulder. So there's that. All right, let's go. It. So it's got the same, uh, like I said, same powertrain as the Mazda 3. It's got the 2.5 liter uh, turbo engine with 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Now this is a bigger and heavier vehicle than that. Uh, driving dynamics will pay a price for the added weight and the added height. But other than that, it, it feels very similar to what we just drove a little while ago in that Mazda Sport. Mazda 3. I keep wanting to call it a Mazda Speed, which it was not. It was not a Mazda Speed, so it was not a hot, hot hatch. Uh, I don't know that how well it would go up against the GTI head-to-head, uh, -head, but I know we liked it in our time, and I really like this. Not gonna lie, I really like this. Seats hold you in good. They're comfortable. They fit right, which is something until you're hopping in from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle like we do at events like these, you don't really notice subtle dis differences like that that either maybe you never would have thought before or maybe you've never experienced a short seat that does not feel like it comes out underneath you long enough. That was nice. So I drifted a little close to the white line here and the steering wheel started giving me some haptic feedback. By shaking back and forth just to allow let me know hey might want to pay attention and the heads up display has indication of whether or not you're in your lane so very nice I like it I like this a lot this is a very sophisticated refined machine Feels really buttoned down, put together. Those train tracks. Would you have known that those were train tracks that I just drove over? I don't think so. It's firm, but not harsh. Makes it feel bigger and heavier, 
in that aspect in and how firm it is you're not bouncing over it like you you're in a little teeny tiny car that weighs nothing it feels planted I love the exterior color on this more cars should come in this color and the color combo with the black and brown in here I very much approve of again very familiar having just gotten out of the Mazda 3 memory seats that's nice all the same cameras that we had on the Mazda 3. It's got a terrain management mode. So that's interesting. Shows a little car climbing up bumpy hill. Well buttoned down, put together. No creaks or rattles. I'm going to move behind myself now and see what the back seat's like. Okay. It's a little upright to give the cargo area a little bit of room. That's, it's not great. Uh, fairly good leg room behind myself. Passenger seat, again, is a little bit further back and it looks a little tight there, but that's gonna be negotiation between those two passengers. But right here, sitting behind myself, there's a nice cutout behind this seat that my knees go in perfectly. I, I kinda like to, sit and stretch out a little bit. One thing I noticed about these seats as I open the door and let the sunlight hit them is that the perforation actually has some brown accents in it as well. So they're a black seat, got contrasting brown stitching, and then brown accents in the perforations. So just the attention to small detail like that, it's not in your face, but it's well above just the swath of black interiors that you see. Uh, throughout the industry. I'm curious, so I just got in here, so the seat does not scoot forward and back. I'm trying to find if there's a recline. There is. Nice armrest with a couple cup holders. Very padded. And then covered uh, child seat anchors. Interesting that the covers come off. It would be the first thing to be lost. But uh, covered uh, rear cargo panel. So why don't we go back there and take a look. So very nice cargo capacity back here for what you get for the size of the vehicle. Plenty of room back here. Like I said, it's got a hard cover that goes up with the window. Very windy day here, but the buttons are on the hatch up here. So were you vertically challenged? Uh, that's something to consider. Do a quick walk around of the outside now that we're out here. So this kind of a denim -y blue, I need to pull out the Monroney and get the actual name of it. I love it with the black wheels, like very nice. So very familiar to the Mazda 3 we drove earlier, but also, like I said, more grown up, a little more refined. So this would be targeted a little more towards uh, my age and current life situation, life stage, versus that Mazda 3. Uh, but all around, very nice rig, and like I said, very familiar after driving that Mazda 3 earlier. All right. Buick. 2021 Encore GX Essence front wheel drive. So, no all wheel drive in this one. Uh, should be a pretty laden, feature laden vehicle for sure. Buckle up for safety. Oh, all kinds of features or all kinds of cameras on this thing. I don't know, pros and cons to the cameras. I'm just not, personally, I'm just not thrilled with them, but it is what it is. All right, following Corey out in the CX 30, I'm in the Encore. Um, Heated steering wheel for today, for sure. Where are the heated seats? That's, that's really tall. When you suck this, the uh, seat down in where I like it, it actually is not that comfortable. Hmm. It's too high. The center console is too high. 
and there's no adjustment to it. There's no, there's no nothing. Oh, there it is. Hmm. Interesting. That would take some getting used to. It's quiet in here. Big time quiet in here. All right. So the seats in this thing, whew, they are supple. Big time. Really pretty. Um, again, though, <laughs> white leather doesn't work with kids. I realize this is a Buick Encore. Typically, the, again, the demographic of folks that's buying an Encore are not going to have small children, maybe grandchildren. Um, white seats don't work with youngins. They just, it, it, it's just not a good idea. So this has the adaptive cruise. It does have wireless charging. Got a, several ports down there, an aux port, a uh, USB-C, and a USB-A. Um, it's not just, you know, loaded out with all kinds of buttons and gadgets and all that kind of stuff. The screen folds beautifully into the dash. It's not obstructed. It's not uh, intrusive. It's a part of the dash, and I really, really like that. Um, I really, really respect that a lot because so many of the manufacturers these days are putting these big, massive screens that are like poking up out of the dash, right in the middle of the dash. I just don't, it's just not my thing. I like this. I like where everything looks like it fits, looks like it's supposed to be there. Let's get on it a little bit and see how she does. Yeah. Butter smooth. Wow. You don't hardly feel the shifts at all. The only reason I knew it was shifting is because RPM changed. Highway machine for sure. It's comfortable. It's quiet. Uh, I'll go back to the cushy seat thing. I love heavily padded comfortable seats that you kind of ooze into um, as you go. This is this is no exception. It's spectacular all right let's wind it up again man that is so smooth so smooth you hear the noise you know it's not obnoxious this is still luxury so don't want anything too crazy but man this is really nice I'm enjoying this very much so of the CUVs that I've driven this weekend this one probably um, for me is closest to being about perfect when it comes to stiffness versus uh, versus comfort it's uh this is supposed to be a luxury brand right so to be super stiff and super taut is not necessarily its mo uh it doesn't fit the brand it doesn't fit the purpose of this vehicle um this is a beautiful combination of comfort and squishy floaty ride with enough tautness to it that it reminds you you're still attached to the road, which is a good thing. It really is a good thing. Um, very well done. Very, very well done on this rig. Love the suspension. Love the steering wheel. Uh, I'm, I'm still not thrilled about this center console as, as high as it is. Um, yeah, there is zero adjustment to it too. So that's gonna bug me, just based on where I like the seat to be. Um, I could probably move it up and, you know, but I like sitting down in the rig too, so. I don't know. Just personal pet peeve, I guess, with that. No, with no adjustment to that. I'm going to jump in the back seat and see how uh, comfortable it is out back. All right. Uh, so, immediate thoughts. This is not great. The seat is terribly stiff. <laughs> uh getting out of that wonderful supple comfortable front seat and then sitting back here it's like sitting on a concrete bench it's there's no give to it it's ridiculous 
outside of that, it's a pretty comfortable place to be. I got plenty of headroom, no issue there. I am sitting up a little higher than the front two uh, or the driver or passenger seat, so it's, it, it's fairly easy to see, um, see out through the windshield, that type of thing. The doors are a little high, but not too terrible. Uh, looks like a USB-C and USB-A down at the bottom back there was this. Oh, and a 110 plug. That's not uh, not too common at the moment, but I like it. It's a good feature. Plenty of knee leg room back here. This is great. This is this is not a terrible place to be. The uh, the seat would wear on me after about an hour, but outside of that, no complaints. All right, so popping the hatch on the Buick Encore here. Let's see what kind of room we've got back here. It's not bad. Uh, you know, decent space. The seats do lay down flat or flat-ish. Um, so, plenty of room. Corey's talking up the Mazda. But uh, yeah, plenty of room for all your all your junk back here. And uh, throwing groceries back here. Maybe a dog, you, know, you have to take the shelf out. So a dog can hang out back here, not a, not a problem. But uh, again, everybody seems to be going to this super low profile rear bumper where there's not not much of anything getting in your way of being able to get in and out of the vehicle i like it and i don't like it because again the first thing in any kind of accident that, get hit, that gets hit is that hatch and that's probably the most expensive piece on the back of this vehicle Twenty twenty one Mazda CX thirty in polymetal gray metallic. All right, first impressions. Uh, Corey mentioned that this is very similar to the uh, Mazda three turbo, and I would agree completely. Uh, very similar, a lot of similar features, a lot of similar shapes in here. So uh, let's kick it down the road and and see how it runs out. Driving impressions right out of the gate. Uh, it's a little beat you up. While the driving position in this is very similar to the Mazda 3, it is a drastic change from the Buick Encore GX. All right, I'm gonna hop in the back seat. Let's see how it is back there, looks like. Yep, that seat's back all the way, so we'll see what kind of leg room we get out of it. Okay, so low roof line, about hit my head on that thing getting in. Uh, man, similar to the Mazda 3 um, in more ways than one, as we are quickly finding out. Um, yeah, this one, it's okay on the headroom, uh, but the, the sitting up is not great. All right, sitting in the Buick Encore GX. ST trim. Uh, first thing you know getting in it, granted Matt does like to sit on the floor uh, if he can, is I hit my elbow on the center armrest and it is very high, like obnoxiously high almost. And uh, it's okay. It's it's deep but you've got this blocking your way and the only way to access below it is to take this out. So. Um, that's interesting and uh, typical GM hard plastics down here but the further up you move it gets soft and nicer to touch. I will say of the two 
I joked about how this is a luxury trying to be a sport and that's a sport trying to be a luxury. I think Mazda pulls off luxury and sport better than this pulls off luxury and that's like its primary goal. So um, initial thoughts as far as environment and sitting in them, uh, that CX-30 actually has my vote and I'm the GM fanboy. So see what we can do. Let's find the tires. All right. That's not why you're buying it, an Encore GX. I can tell you that right now. Um, it's comfortable. It, it, it's a cruiser, it's a commuter. It's a nice place to be. This is definitely, it, it feels more upright. And I was speaking about, and it's a little harsh too, where I was speaking about driving that CX-30, that it was firm but not harsh. This is a little bit of both. You definitely feel less planted uh, and you feel like you're in a light vehicle for sure. You've got a digital readout in front of you uh, to go with the heads up display. And that digital readout, you know, tells you the status of your cruise control. Uh, if there's uh, speed limit data, there's a little speed limit indicator in there right next to your digital actual speed so you know uh, that you're following the law well and uh, yeah, it's nice I just noticed something yep there's the button for it, it has the dreaded start stop so came to a stop sign back there it was stopped long enough the engine is warm enough uh, that it kicked off wasn't intrusive, it wasn't annoying just in stop and go traffic, but if I had to quickly go, uh, that, that's something to consider. But you know, let's see here. Sitting, stopped, engine's off. Back on. I really like the look of that CX-30. Ain't gonna lie. But now, I'm going to hop in the back seat and tell you a little bit of my impressions. Matt already warned me I'm not going to like it. So I hope I don't take any preconceived notions into that, but we shall see. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh. What the heck? You don't sit in the seat. You sit on it. No, 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 no. Uh, I weigh nearly 200 pounds. I'm like 180, 190, somewhere in there. Um, uh, and I, I should be in the seat more than this. I should, there should be more give, but this is firm. I will say the back angle is comfortable. You're not sitting upright like some of the other things that we've ridden in, but Woo! I couldn't make a long trip back here. Um, your your rear would get sore quick back here. I, I'm even trying to adjust and, and find the right seating position. It's got a 1.3 liter turbo engine and a CVT. I don't think Matt knows it has a CVT. So that just speaks to, we've driven a lot of cars on this trip and We've driven several CVTs and we did not like them. Matt liked the engine and transmission in this one. And I had a feeling it was a CVT, uh, but I didn't want to break it to him. But it just proves that a CVT can be done well if it's programmed well. And it's going to be fun breaking the news to him. All right, Matt, final thoughts. We're sitting in the Buick. Uh -huh. Do we want to talk about the Buick first? Sure. Okay. This is the one I'm buying. Really? I did, at this point in my life, at least for this type of vehicle, if I'm buying one of these, it's to replace my wife's rig. Right. Which means it's gonna be the rig that we travel in. It's right. gonna be the rig that we put the miles on. Right. Um, and while the back seat 
<laughs> it's pretty <laughs> stiff. Yeah. Uh, it's nothing like trying to sit up in that thing. Yeah, the, the angle is wrong. The cushion is right in that one. The angle is wrong. The angle is right in this one. But it's The cushion stiff. is bad. Like, it's I really sat stiff. down I said, no, no, no. <laughs> Especially with as wonderful right. as these front seats are, yeah. too. Very so, comfortable seats. Yeah. Uh, uh, the ride comfort in this mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, keeps you in contact with the road, gives you enough feedback, but doesn't beat you up. That thing is abusive. Really? I really thought that that was... I felt that that one was firm, but I didn't feel like it was harsh. This one felt like it, like you were in a very light box that was bouncing around on the road. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I thought this was much better. Yeah. I really did. And as I thought that one was comfort. much better. Because <laughs> There again, you go. Yeah. Opposite reviews for, uh, you know... So. This is where I'm going to have fun. Okay. Matt, um, window sticker for the Buick that we're sitting in. Yeah. Uh, remind me again what you thought of the powertrain of this. Uh, I really enjoyed the powertrain of yeah. this. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's smooth. It's 1.3 little, tiny little sucker of an engine. Right. Yeah. Uh, but transmission, beautiful shifts on the transmission. Uh, it runs out well. All those types of things. Why don't you read to me what kind of transmission it has? Oh, no. Oh no. <laughs> yes, this has a CVT, Matt. This has a continuously variable transmission. And you couldn't tell. Buick filled you. If it's done well and done right, it's not so bad. I thought this was a dual clutch automatic. Really? I genuinely thought this was yeah. a dual clutch automatic. So it, it is proof that transmissions can be done right. Yeah and that uh, it, all it takes is a proper engineering and tuning on the back side of it. A little pitter-patter on the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, very interesting takeaways here because I knew instantly getting in that one that I was gonna pick that one. Um, the interior is a far nicer appearance, uh, nicer materials, because... It's typical GM. Yeah, yep. And even this, like, it's very high. I mentioned it earlier. It's hard plastic, and it's, oh, that's bad. <laughs> and the only way to get down to the bottom is to take this thing out, and then what do you do with it? Right. So, uh, there, there are some things in here that just kind of leave me scratch my head. But, again, the further up you go, it's, it's less, you know, typical GM. It's nicer. Uh, Bu Buick's got nice design lines in it. Um, this is much more luxuriously set up versus the sporty setup that's in that. Yeah, that again, that is sporty with a luxury tint to it, and this is luxury, luxury with which, as I was reading, that really the red is the only sport intentions of this. And after driving this, uh, yes, the red is the only sport intentions <laughs> of this. So. Uh, very interesting takeaways. Definitely. So uh, I guess rock, paper, scissors to see who actually wins. But uh, I I'm taking that one. And uh, honestly, if I'm buying it, I'm not shopping this this segment in general. But yeah. of these two, I'm taking the Mazda. Sure. You're, you're taking the Buick. I'm taking the Buick. All right. There you go. <laughs> charge.